Okay, we're going to move on to the next step, which that is actually looking at how do you actually in lab prepare these solutions now. Um, you may think it's as easy as go back there, dump a bunch of mass into a, a beaker, pour the water in, swirl it up and be done, um, which will work if you want to get close to the concentration. However, if you need to get that concentration, that molarity very precisely and very accurately done, you need to go through a process called volumetric measuring. Uh, we're going to run through a couple of videos. The first one's about seven minutes long. It's going to take you through some of the background information, remind you of some of the calculations, um, which will be a good review for you guys. And then it's also going to take you through the step-by-step -step process. So uh, please pay attention because tomorrow in lab, um, I want to expect that you guys can follow this procedure um, from what you saw today in these videos. So here we go. Today, we will be preparing a solution of sodium chloride using a small amount of sodium chloride as our solute added to a larger volume of water, our solvent. We express amount as a concentration. The most common unit for concentration in chemistry is molarity, abbreviated capital M, which indicates the number of moles of solute dissolved in a certain volume of the total solution. This gives molarity derived units of moles per liter. It is very important to note that this is a volume of solution, not the volume of solvent. Today, we will be preparing 500 milliliters of a 0.25 molar sodium chloride solution. Before beginning, it's important to map out your procedure for preparing this solution. Here, we'll look at the amount of sodium chloride we need in this solution. We know that we want to prepare a 0.25 molar solution, which means that there is 0.25 moles per liter of solution. We also know that we only want 500 milliliters of this solution, or a half liter. If we multiply these two terms together, we can see that we will need 0.125 moles of sodium chloride. From earlier, we can remember that there are 58.43 grams per mole of sodium chloride. We can determine that the exact mass that must be measured out is 7.304 grams of sodium chloride. In lab, obtain some sodium chloride in a clean lab scoop and using a balance with some weighing paper, measure out as close to 7.304 grams as possible, marking down your exact mass. Note that if you go over the desired mass, it's never appropriate laboratory procedure to put the excess reagent back into the original container. Always use an additional container to collect the excess. Once you've measured out your solid, and recorded the exact mass. Transfer all of the solid to the appropriate sized volumetric flask. Volumetric flasks are made specifically for this purpose and should be used over other less accurate labware, such as beakers, Erlenmeyer flasks, or graduated cylinders. Here, we just transferred our solute to the 500 milliliter volumetric flask. If any solute remains on the weighing paper, use a spatula or a small amount of water to transfer the remaining salt. Next, add enough water so that the bulb area at the bottom of the flask is approximately half full. This will give you enough room to swirl the liquid, allowing the solute to completely dissolve. Again, it's critical that all of the solute is dissolved prior to filling to the appropriate volume, as different solutes may take up more volume in solution than their undissolved salts. Okay, we're take a little point here what he just said. Um, you have to swirl your solvent with your solute because when, once the dissolving process happens the actual volume changes inside the beaker. Uh, so if you don't dissolve all your solute once it does dissolve your volume actually will change because there is a difference in volume between dissolved and undissolved solute. So please make sure when you're working tomorrow that before you fill it to the actual volume line that you completely dissolve all your solute. Now that the sodium chloride is completely dissolved we can fill the rest of the bulb area and some of the neck with water. You should now carefully and slowly add water, our solvent, as it begins to fill the neck. Once you approach the etched or printed line on the neck of the flask, you should add solvent dropwise, monitoring the location of the meniscus. Water, as a polar solvent, tends to cling to the... Notice how on a, on a volumetric flask, there are no markings on the entire flask except for one line straight across here. A volumetric flask really is only useful for measuring one very specific volume, 
and it does so very, very precisely and very accurately. So actually in a usable lab, you will have several different volumetric flasks at your disposal. You'll have a 100 milliliter one, a 200 milliliter, a 300, a 400, a 500, a thousand, whatever you happen to need to get you the correct volume amounts, which ends up being a lot of different glassware for very precise volume measurements. The glass walls of a flask. This phenomenon creates what is called a meniscus. The bottom of this curved meniscus should sit directly level with the line on the flask. At this point, there is exactly 500 milliliters of solution with an air of 0.2 milliliters. Different volume flasks have different air values. You notice here that it shows the air value here plus or minus 0 0.20 milliliters. So this 500 milliliter volumetric flask actually has an air of as much as 0.2 of a milliliter. Also notice how over here it says 20 degrees Celsius. What they're telling you is that this volumetric flask is only standardized at 20 degrees Celsius. So if you're working in a much hotter environment or a much colder environment, um, the expansion of the glass itself would throw off the volume and would not be accurate anymore. So what you want to do is 20 degrees Celsius is pretty close to our normal room temperature. So when you're working with these, you want to use as close as you can to room temperature uh, water as you're working with this, which we will have tomorrow for you guys. The air on a volumetric flask is much lower than any other type of glassware of similar volume. For example, the volume markings on a beaker or an Erlenmeyer flask are only accurate to plus or minus 5%, meaning if the meniscus were on the 500 milliliter line, it could be anywhere between 475 milliliters and 525 milliliters. On the other hand, using a volumetric flask, we know that the volume is exactly somewhere between 499.8 milliliters and 500.2 milliliters, meaning it's much more accurate. So we're going to move on from here. Uh, the next step in this video that they're going to talk about really goes through and verifying your volumetric procedure. And as long as we do everything precisely, we're going to just assume that our uh, measurements were done precisely. And then later on in the year, when we get to titrations and uh, acid-base chemistry, we'll talk about verification of concentration at that point. So we're going to move on to the next video. To prepare a solution of known concentration from a solid solute, we must first weigh out an appropriate amount of the solid. For example, to prepare 250 milliliters of a one molar solution of copper sulfate, we first weigh out 0.250 moles of copper sulfate. Most commonly, copper sulfate is available as the pentahydrate. The formula mass of copper sulfate pentahydrate is 249.7. We weigh out precisely one-fourth of this mass, 62.4 grams. Note that the weight on the balance is the sum of the paper and copper sulfate. We okay, the reason why we're showing this video is notice how if you did the molar mass of the copper sulfate pentahydrate, they included the mass of the water because as in its crystal form, that hydrate actually has the water prepared there. So when you make up the solution, you need to factor that in. So when you do the formula mass or the molar mass of hydrates, you include the hydrate mass as part of your calculation. You don't exclude it. You do include that part. Next, transfer the copper sulfate completely to a 250 milliliter volumetric flask. Water is added and the flask swirl to dissolve the solid. Finally, water is added to bring the total volume in the flask to exactly 250 milliliters. Okay, we'll go on to the next video. This one focuses on uh, the, the dilution part and making sure that you put in the proper volume. Ready for dilution. Use solvent to wash any residual solute from the neck of the flask. Take this last opportunity to mix the solution well before diluting it to the mark. When the solution level is near the mark, check that the temperature of the solution is near room temperature. If it is not, wait for it to reach room temperature. Use an eyedropper to bring the meniscus to the mark. Insert a stopper and mix the solution by inverting it. Do not use your hand. Okay, the last part there about inverting the stopper, if you don't mix after you add that last bit of water, what will happen is 
in the top side of your solution, you'll actually have a less concentrated form of your solution. It'll be more concentrated towards the bottom. So once you get to the volumetric flash, you want to make sure you do a last set of mixing to get all that solution completely mixed evenly so the concentration is even throughout. Okay guys, we're going to move on to what you're going to be doing tomorrow. For lab tomorrow, you're going to calculate the correct mass in grams needed, needed to prepare the correct concentration of a solution you'll be, you'll be working with. We're going to have a volumetric flask that has a blue cap on it, and we want 100 milliliters of a 0 0.40 molar copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate solution. So for both of these solutions, you need to calculate now how many grams of copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate you're going to be putting in, Tomorrow we're going to make the solution using a volumetric process, so make sure you're prepared for that. And we'll be using distilled water because we do not want tap water because that will contain contaminants. And then when we're all done, we're going to label it properly. And then we're actually going to store it um, because later on this week and into next week, we're going to use both of these solutions for other labs. So really um, be very precise with this tomorrow. And accuracy is a must for us because what you are making is going to determine the quality of the lab that you do later on in the in the um, the week okay so go ahead and finish up the day with these two calculations and I will see you guys tomorrow thanks